Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. My guest on today's show is Valerie Brown, Executive Director for the Greater Williamson Road Area Business Association. She's been shaking things up along the busy commercial corridor since coming aboard almost five years ago. Valerie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And I thought it was four years ago, so I lost a whole year. I'm blaming it on, on COVID, but it's been almost five years. Five years in January. So tell people how you got to Roanoke, or what you were doing before. I am a professional fundraiser by trade. And I'm from Vermont and lived there all my life, did all my, my first fundraising events up there. Moved to Northern Virginia, I lived there for almost 20 years, working for uh, several nonprofits. While there, I raised probably a little bit over $60 million. And then all my kids are in Roanoke, so I figured if they're here, I need to follow and be here as well. Mm -hmm. So when you heard about RABA, or now the Greater Williamson right. area, uh, Area Business Association, what did you, what did you think it was? Or what, what, what did you think of it, the structure? I wasn't quite sure. I, in my mind, it sounded and seemed to operate much like a chamber of commerce. And it had a lot of PR involved with it, and that had my interest. Mm -hmm. So I heard about it. I went in early for my job interview. I was out of there three hours later, and an hour later I had the phone call. I had the job. Wow. You, know, you, you said you were in fundraising for a long time, and I know one of the things, and you sent me a strategic plan and your work plan, that a lot of it involves networking. Right. So sort of the, some, some of the same skills for fundraising you can yes. bring to what you're doing now? Absolutely. In fact, when I first came to, at that time, the Williamson Road Area Business Association, um, they, a lot of the businesses were struggling, and they were struggling because they, you know, we had 581, we had... A lot of things going on downtown, a lot of things going on over, beginning to go on over at Tanglewood. And it was almost like they were forgotten. And so I wanted to reach out and do relationship building, networking with the businesses, because if we were going to take them seriously, then they would take them seriously as, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, when you look at the valley, there's a lot of stuff going on downtown, Tanglewood being redeveloped. Uh, some redevelopment like in the South Rural Crystal Spring Avenue, Grandin Village, but it, it, Williamson Road has been around a long time as a commercial corridor. Did some of the businesses there, you know, and the, we'll talk about some of the improvements you want to see in the road, did some of the businesses there felt like they were being forgotten? Yes, yes, very much so, they, right. they, they did. And I recently gave a talk on Williamson Road and the Williamson Road itself, and the road was built in 1912. And that's a long time ago, and that's a long time to have businesses come and go and really want to thrive in competition with everything else going on. Now, th did I read that these, is it the businesses that chipped in to get, help get the road build or built? Or? They, they did. They, they went to the city, and at that time, the... 581 wasn't there. No, not at all. The governing part of Roanoke at that time was the County Board of Supervisors, and they went to them and asked them, for monies to help build the road. And so the county and the people gave the road and the convicts in the area did the labor. Mm. So was the whole of Williamson Road in Roanoke County at that time before it was annexed? Or was it was. It was, okay. It was. Interesting. Uh, and it, it really now, the Williamson Road, Greater Williamson Road Area Business Association spans two localities, Roanoke County and Roanoke City. Correct. So does that present a challenge in itself to get everybody on the same page as far as what, what, what needs to be done? It does. It very, very much does. And we are really right in the middle because if you come out our driveway and you go right, you're in the county. And if you go left, you're in the city. So my hope, my plan, and what I always try to work at is to get everybody to play nice in the sandbox, as I say. Right. Which is much better now than it used to be. When I moved down there, there was a lot of, even on school boards, fighting with each other. You, you said, uh, I know you talked recently, uh, as we go to taping to the Kiwanis Club about the history, George Washington slept he, at some place along Williamson he Road. He did sleep somewhere. One of the first settlers was a person named Mark Evans. And he was the first one to really settle on Williamson Road proper. And he had a little over 1,900 acres. 
And so we followed his story and he eventually passed away and everything went to his w w wife. Um, and that was when George Washington came in. George Washington slept at the widow Evans's home mm. when he was in the area checking on the forts and all the pr protection that was going on out here. This is before he became president? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think so. You know, George Washington was a smart man. When he, he was a surveyor, he surveyed yes. all the way out to Ohio and all that, and he, and he bought up a lot of property. He did. You know, cheap. He Absolutely. And the other claim to fame of history on history is that another settler, his name was um, Christian was his last name, and his daughter married, no, I take that, like he married the daughter of the Patrick Henry. Wow. So we have some history here. A lot of history on that road. It was looking at your work plan and, and, and some of the areas that you want to focus on, Valerie, uh, business support, community engagement, area improvement. Let's talk about area improvement. Um, I know that that's sort of in the early stages. Talk about some of the improvements you'd like to see along Williamson Road, both for pedestrian safety and for motorist safety. Okay. There are three main points that I've always talked about since coming aboard with as the executive director. One is safety, one is crime, and one is helping the businesses grow and survive. And the safety is a big deal because if you go one block off Williamson Road, whether you're in the city or the county, you have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of families, a lot of children. And accompanying with that, if you want to attract people to Williamson Road to shop, you have to make it safe. And we've recently been working with the Roanoke County and Transportation Office, as well as the um, VDOT. And we're working to hopefully get a grant. We apply for a grant that will help us narrow the road somewhat. It'll put sidewalks in, it'll put curbs in, it'll put bike lanes in. And instead of having two lanes going each way, it's gonna be one lane each way with a shared center lane. So then if someone wants to cross the road, they can do it a bit at a time. Whereas now they have to go across four lanes of speeding cars right. and nowhere to stop until they get to the other side. So it should make it more pedestrian friendly as well. Right. And uh, maybe people will start seeing Williamson Road as just less of a throughway and as a place to kind of right. come up and go shopping, right. which has been w done elsewhere. Correct. Right. And one of the things that um, we are starting this year is a mini facade grant program. And it's going to be, it's on the small end as opposed to what the city has on a larger end. And our plan is to work with the businesses so that they can fix up the outside of their building, whether it be landscaping, windows, painting, whatever it is. We'll, we'll work with them and pay whoever is doing the work so that It'll be prettier, it'll be nicer, it'll be more inviting, and it will have the interest of those people, you know, the customers and the clients going up and down the road. Yeah, I know Vinton's done a facade program with us. Have. Salem has. Uh, do the facades have to be sort of uniform or of a certain design? We're working on those guidelines now. Um, probably so. We're not going to be super strict. Right. But we also, because we also want to be a nod to what the businesses are. We have a lot of international businesses all up and down the road, and their view of what they want their building to look like is different than what somebody else who is from this area would want, but it's not going to be so off that it doesn't fit. Right. I'm wondering if there's any move toward them. You see this in some communities, more uniform signage on, on along Williamson. Yes, we want to work on that. Um, we have a lot of blank signs on the road that don't need to be there. We have a lot of sign posts and a lot of light sign posts that are there that don't need to be there. So we'd like to take down what we don't need and keep up what we do need and then make it more u uniform as you go up and down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Williamson Road is a heavily commercial corridor, but like you said, you go the next block over and it's on both sides, it's, 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 it's residential. Very much so. Right, so uh, I, I would imagine a lot of those people already frequent establishments along Williamson Road, correct? They, they do, and so, some of the ones that they have frequented or would want to, unfortunately, have closed. So we want to be able to do what we can to attract them back into the area and keep those people shopping on Williamson Road 
and then invite those outside of the greater road area to come and shop as well. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that you do, I think once or twice a year is restaurant week. Right. Um, and it just seems like if you're in Southwest Ronald County or somewhere else in the city in Grandin or whatever that, and you start thinking about, I want this type of food or that type of food, maybe we, Williamson Road does not come to the top of mind all the time. And, and talk about how you want to change that, that you want people to, and, and with the help of things like Restaurant Week, right. you want people to think about, wow, I, I want a certain type of food, food from Honduras. I got to go to Williamson Road, that type of thing. Right. And we, we did some of that. We started um, the first passport, Travel Williamson Road. And it's, you know, it's like you are traveling the world mm -hmm. because we have all the different ethnic um, individuals on the road and we we will advertise the living daylights as i say out of the businesses you know we will we will advertise them whether we have a camera come in and film them actually making the food or we give opportunities where come to williamson road and win this or win that just to get the p people there and when we started the passport program you know, I was on the radio, I was on television, I was saying, do you have your passport? Do you have your passport? And this is where people would go in and, and to different establishments right. and, and get their passport. Right. It looked, it looked like a real passport. Right. And in fact, someone did take it to the airport and oh. realized when they got there, they oh took the goodness. wrong passport. But it looks like a real passport. And we had given all the businesses stamps so that when you went into their business, they would stamp your, your book. And then at the end of the two weeks, program, um, they would turn them back in. And we had drawings, one of which we partnered with the airport, and they gave a $500 travel voucher on American Airlines. I remember that, yeah. So it's just pulling everybody together just to have fun. And, and if people are having fun, then they remember that and they'll come back. You know, I know uh, you've been growing membership since you've been on board. How is it dealing with some of the businesses on Williamson that speak another language as their first language and the different cultures on there, ha getting them into the, the, uh, the Raba universe. Right. How does that work? I mean, is, is that a challenge sometimes? It is a challenge, but um, people know people. So we know people who may own a business who are bilingual. So then we partner with he or she and then go to those businesses who don't have the ability to speak 100% in English. We invite them to luncheons where they are welcomed with open arms and just getting to know them where they are at and then inviting them from where they are at as well. And I know you've been working with some groups, the Latina business group and uh, Casa Latina. Right. Does that seem like it's helped to kind of draw the Hispanic community along Williamson closer it, to Raba? It, it has. In fact, our very first tenant, j jumping ahead to one of the things that we've done with our collab, our a shared office workspace, our very first tenant, very first office holder, was a member of Casa Latina and joined. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that since you brought it up. It's funny, you had a ribbon cutting at one new location, which was the old Happy's right. flea market, and you had a, sh a small shared working space there. But then you found another better deal down the road, along Williamson Road, in a building called the Williamson, where your headquarters is, and then there's a shared space, sort of a business incubator there. Right. Talk about that move and, and, and what do you think it does for some of these, you know, fledgling businesses? Sure. Um, when we were at Happy's, the Fort Knox storage facility, there's this whole side that's a retail space. And we were the first ones to be invited there. And that was our first real home. So it was pretty exciting. We had our open house and all of that. And then a few months later, I was provided the opportunity to move up the road a little bit. We still kept that space because we have sublet it out to a te tenant who sure. um, has their own small business. And so we moved into um, a space at the Williamson Road Plaza area, renovated all that, built new offices for ourselves and built a shared office workspace that we call the Williamson. And it has private office spaces there and also has open air desk spaces. And we finished construction the end of May. And I'm really happy to say that all of our private offices have been taken. They're all being rented out by different individuals. And now, always thinking ahead, I'm looking to grow some more. Really? What, a more shared space property? or? Um, 
whatever we can find, if we can get a larger space where we are, that's wonderful. If not, we've had a couple of businesses offer us um, properties that they have, and some of those are in the county, which would kind of be nice. You know, we service both the city and the county, but sometimes location says a whole lot. Right. So. You know, by the way, talking about the road improvements and all that, mm -hmm. in cities in Virginia, the cities take care of that. In the counties, VDOT takes care of that. So when you're talking about all these road improvements, the, the road diet, you know, from four to three lanes with the, mm -hmm. the turning line in the middle, how's that working out? Do you have to kind of get both sides on the same wavelength? Not this time because we're only talking on the city side. You are, okay. Only, so to go from about Orange Avenue to almost Hirschberger, and 95% of that space is going to be curbed and going to be sidewalked, which would be phenomenal. Right. And, you know, the thing about having sidewalks and, like, safe, big, wide sidewalks is that, you know, you might find, especially in some stretches, Valerie, people more inclined to park a car and walk for a little right. bit, go to other places. Especially if they have an idea of what's really coming up. They know the next three, four storefronts is this type of store, that type of store, this place to eat, that type of thing. Right. Yeah. Sure. And talk about the expansion. The Williamson Road Area Business Association uh, became the, uh, the greater Williamson Road Area Business Association. Talk about the expansion. And that happened on your watch, too, correct? Correct. I always looked at it at the organization beyond Williamson Road proper. And any business that would come and ask for help, whether they wanted to know how to file something, they wanted signage issues, they wanted to know how to advertise, wh whatever it was, and wherever they were, um, I said yes. I helped them all along the way. So then the more I thought about it, I thought, well, why can't we formalize this more so that all these businesses know we are here and know where our footprint is? So prior to my coming, the city had started a special services district fund called the SSD. And um, they gave us money out of that. It came from the taxes that were paid by the business owners on a certain length of the road. And uh, for this case, it was the city end of Williamson Road. Mm -hmm. So um, I went back to the city and petitioned to grow our footprint. So now we go down Hirschberger, or is it up towards 581? I, I'm not sure right. which direction is. And so we have you know, all the way to the airport, not to include the airport. Right. To Hershberger, basically. Right, all of that, and Town Square, and part of Airport Road as well. Mm -hmm. And so with that request, and working with the city on that, they increased our income. So now we are a little over $258,000 that they give us each year. And our position, our pledge, is that we're going to turn around and put that money right back into the road. We're not saving a dime of it. Right. It's kind of, yeah, quite a jump from 112000 to, like you said, 250 And I was wondering why the city had to approve that, but that's because you get some of this tax money from city, the city. Right. Yeah. Now, the county gives us money on their own, and it's in a different program, and it's nowhere near to that caliber, at least not yet. I'll be talking to them, though. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> How do you see that money going to good use, that extra money, you know, for marketing or uh, networking purposes? How do you see that money going to good use? All of the above. We want to do the marketing for them and with them, along with them. We want to do the l luncheons we do are great opportunities to bring people together. And for that, we don't use city money for that. We have dues that the businesses pay, and that pays for the luncheons. Um, we also, the facade grant program that I want to work on, and then the Williamson itself is all part of that. Mm -hmm. And we've also been working with the Roanoke Arts Committee. Roanoke Commission. Arts Commission, uh, Doug Jackson? Right. Sure. And, and I s sit on that commission with him, and I have pledged to put public art on Williamson Road. And the building we are in now has a blank, long wall. It's got nine panels, and in the art world, that's nine canvases. Sure. And so my hope is to work with some artists and have renditions of the older Williamson Road storefronts there so that it's not only a nod to the road, but it's also a nod to public art. There's been a lot of great public art in the city. Grandin oh, Village gorgeous. has put some in. Uh, I met the muralist who's putting, who put public art underneath the 13th and 9th mm -hmm. Street Bridge, uh, which really gives you a vibe about Southeast. One, one of the murals has a, like a, a map, right. Southeast and all that. So, 
And, and that would be something that would also draw Williamson Road closer to what's happening elsewhere in the city right. as far as public art, that type right. of thing. Right, right. Some of the, uh, some of the businesses, are they excited about that? They, they are, they are, because they, they see it, as, as you say, that doing things like this, um, we're going to also do a um, international beer, food, and wine festival in the spring. Really? And um, pulling everybody together. So it's bringing notice to the road. You bring notice to the road, it makes the businesses real and personal, and it makes the owners and the managers and, and the, pe the employees real. You know where you're going to do that yet? I'm working on yeah, okay, it. Okay, okay. It's going to be great. And it's, one, of the, one of the things that really brings a lot of people from outside of that area to Williamson Road every year is the, the Greek Festival right. in September, I believe. Right, but I think they have unfortunately fallen the way of COVID. Oh, okay. So okay. They, have, they didn't do it this year. I know they, they did not do it this past yeah, year at all. That, that used to draw a lot of people, though. I, mean, I think they're, they're doing things now online more so okay. than in person. Okay. Um, one of the things also that you you talked about in your uh, business plan was um, uh, referrals uh, integral or an integral growing, growing businesses in the area. What do you mean referrals? You mean people saying, hey, I went to this restaurant or this sh shop or that type of thing? It, it could be as simple as that, but what we were thinking more are mentors. So we have people who are renting out some of our, our offices and some of them may not know you know, they, they may know they want to be a, um, a tax attorney or they want to be a tax person for the Hispanic community, but they don't know exactly how and what to do. They got the bigger picture, but now we have to close it in to make, this is how it starts. So we would match that person up with a professional on the road who's already doing this kind of work. Okay, and kind of help. And help them along the way. Sure, sure. There's a lot of that go going on that it, it seems like this person might have a great deal of knowledge they can pass along right. and kind of help jump start another business. You know, you sort of mentioned it with the Greek Festival, and you were here before COVID. Mm -hmm. How has COVID affected the Williamson Road, the Greater Williamson Road Area Business Association? I think in a lot of ways it's brought um, a lot of the business people closer together. Um, we are a small office. We are now a two-person office, but prior to that we are a one-person office. So. I never missed a day of work. I came in every day. I held a lot of virtual hands. I did a lot of Zoom calls. I filled out a lot of PPP forms for not only our, ourselves, but for you know those in businesses all up and down the road. That needed personal protective equipment, sure. Correct, and though we had a lot of that. And then we had those who just needed the extra money to keep their business going. And, um, it just helped them along the way and gave them hope that they're not going to crash and burn or have to close or any of that. So we were able to help them. And then right after COVID kind of started wanting and then we could get back together. And when we started doing our luncheons again, we took the appropriate precautions and all that. They all came. They all came to see each other, to congratulate each other that they had made it through and to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And for us to say thank you as well, because we're thrilled they're all there. Right. How many different countries are represented along Williamson Road? And, and again, I, this goes back to a question I asked before. Does that make it more of a challenge to get people to network and to share information? I mean, how many estimated countries? Oh, my gosh. I couldn't even begin to guess. Uh -huh. But Probably at least a couple dozen. Oh, yeah. more than. Really? Okay. More, more than. So it was like when, when some of those different countries or people that came from another country, when they needed PPE or they needed help with it, is it, make, is it more of a challenge? It is. Um, they know what they want or they see what they want, but they don't know how to do it. And then, you know, some of them, and it's not just the Roanoke area, it's not just Williamson Road area, but some of them may not even be here, honestly. And so that makes them all the more afraid as well. Right. So besides working with them one-on-one -on -one or in groups like that, I also have partnered with both uh, police departments for both the city and the county. And that has helped a whole lot because a lot of these people are afraid of the police because of where they come from. Sure. You know, the police in one country might be those who come and lock everybody up. And so here they see a police officer and those same thoughts are in their minds. So we're trying to bridge that gap as well so that when the police are around, it's not a bad thing. 
And that was why this past year, for the first time, we held National Night Out. And it was huge, absolutely huge. Um, our landlord, Tom Branch, allowed us to take over the whole parking lot. And so we had rides and we had climbing walls and we had disco this and we had food trucks. It was just a lot of fun. A lot of first responders were there and they were climbing the rock walls with the kids and they were hula hooping with the kids. <laughs> and Two things I can't do. <laughs> You and me either. <laughs> and during the course of the evening, uh, we had over a thousand people there. Wow. I only have about a minute left sure. to wrap up. Uh, are you bullish on the future of the, uh, the Williamson am, Road Area Association? And talk I'm about so it. excited. I'm so excited. My board tells me, Val, you have a new idea every every day, and I plan to live up to that. So. And people like a lot of your ideas, I hope. So far, so good. Valerie Brown, the Executive Director for the Greater Williamson Road Area Business Association. Valerie, we're going to have to leave you there, but thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed being here. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Have a good day.